of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks it on a bright and fair. When the Savior men shall gather over all the other shore. And the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. And the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky. And the road is caught up yonder, I'll be there. When the road, when the road is caught up yonder. From the dawn's incessant song, let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then, when all of life is over and I walk on earth is gone, and the road is far up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is far up yonder. Just ask the Lord to help us such that when the role will be called, it will all be there in the mighty name of Jesus. Ask yourself that God, please help me when the role will be called, I'll be there in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be missing on the list while others are flying high to meet the Lord in the air, dead or alive. Lord, count me among the numbers in Jesus' mighty name. When angels are calling the numbers, and the roll call is being made, the final roll call of all roll calls. Lord, let me not be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus. Prepare me and help me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so that we say thank you for this hour. We bless you because we know you are faithful. Thank you for the privilege of waiting upon you, of trusting you, of believing in you, and of praying to you. Thank you because you have called us to be your people and you have made us your people and you are our God. And thank you because you didn't call us that we might know you just here and forget about it. No, you call us that we might reign with you in your kingdom. And Lord, when the road be called, that the Lord be counting those that are his and they be welcoming them home one by one. As we have prayed this evening and as we have sung in our song, May we not be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the list, I'll be open before you. And the angel that will sound the trumpet will be calling name one after the other. And the dead will be rising to meet their Lord. And the living will be transformed to meet their God. Father, we pray that dead or alive, we will not miss this chance in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As we study tonight, speak to our heart, Amen. speak to our life. I pray for us men down their way, cooking their footsteps, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. By the time you are true tonight, may we all be glad we came in Jesus' mighty name. Speak your words and let our heart be blessed by them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A better hallelujah. hallelujah. 
I want to bless God for the opportunity to be at his feet again this evening. May his name be praised forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight we are beginning what we call eschatology study. In other words, the study of last day's events. It will appease it to appease you to know that we are already in the last days. And many of the things that are foretold, I be example of those things that will happen in the last days, are happening already. And we are witnesses to these things. And they are marking the coming of the Son of God. We should begin with the taking away of the church. As we sang in our song, that role we call, just like in secondary school those days, and I think it's still be done today on the assembly ground, a name of students will be called. And everyone will say, presenza. And they will march into their classes. And if anyone's name is not found on that list, you'll not be allowed into the class. The same thing, a time will come, God will number his own from among the dead and his own from among the living. And the role call will be made. And one by one, everyone will answer to his name. And those that are his will be transformed, either dead or alive, and they will rise up with the Lord to meet him in the air. It's my prayer that when that time we, we come, either we are alive or dead, we shall meet with the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And if the Lord tarry, as long as on this part of the world we are alive, we be alive and remain, and ready for this event in Jesus' mighty name. So beginning this series of eschatological study, this is part one, by discussing the rapture of the church, which is originally the first event in series of events that are listed for that day. If you are with us on the, I think on, is it on Sunday or Saturday? Saturday, when we made that list, then you understand what we are talking about, at least some extent now. So the first thing on the list of last day's events which this church is expecting to happen at any time. From now, it will be, it's honest, it will be sudden, though not completely unexpected because the church is waiting for it. But it will come a time when people least expected it to happen. The Bible says when they shall say peace and peace, that sudden the church shall come upon them. So what we are discussing now and we are expecting to happen is the rapture of the church, which in other words, the taking away the transformation of the church to meet the Lord in the air. That is when we drop this our body, we will now be transformed to the body of the, to a celestial body. The body it just is transformed, just change, just the way ice block change to water or what has changed to ice block is still the same thing. Nothing has changed. The chemical components is still the same thing. Just that it, there was a transformation. So the same way we transform to make the law in the air. And I want us to listen very carefully so that we can learn because these lessons are interwoven. They are connected. They are like a long chain. Once you, are, you miss one, the next one may be difficult for you to get. So we must really pay attention and be sure we are following. So that if anyone is not here and they ask a the question, you can answer and help them to some certain level. So the rapture of the church, which will be the study one of the series of eschatology. Eschatology simply means the last day, study of the last day event. We take our test from 1 Thalonian 13, 14, I'm sure, 4, 13 to 18. 4 Thessalonians 4, I read from 13 to 18. 4 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. But I will not have you ignorant, brethren. In other words, I don't want to be in the dark, not knowing what is happening, or not aware what is expected or will, will happen. So I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. In other words, the brethren, those that believe the faith have died, either they were martyred or they died by natural causes. So I wouldn't want to be, uh, to be ignorant what has happened to them. 
you know, sometimes we miss our loved one by reason of death. People cry, people weep, people miss them. But our poets say we are not like those outside there that they know they will never see each other again. But we, we are not without hope. We know we are going to see each other someday again. And therefore, we don't refer to brethren as dead. We say they are asleep. You remember when they called Jesus Christ that your loved friend was sick and he said, I'm coming. And later they sent to him that don't bother coming again because the man is dead. And uh, Jesus Christ simply told them, he's asleep. And they said, if he's asleep, then leave him to sleep. When th- any time comes, he wake up. Now say, not that he's sleeping physically, now he's gone. So we are going there to wake him. So in, in, the, in Christendom in Christ, we only sleep. Because for sure, a time will come, we wake again to see each other. So I don't want to be ignorant concerning them. What has happened to them, or what is happening to them that are uh, asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Others have no hope that they will ever see their loved one again. As a young child, my mother died when I was very small. Anytime I read this scripture, I always had in mind that one day I will see her. And I really pray that happen. So that is the joy and the hope we have as believers. So 14 say, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I won't be, we all believe that, correct? That Jesus can rose again, is that correct? Yes. Do you all believe that? Yes. That he died and rose on the third, third day. So if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so, they that are asleep, that died in Jesus Christ, will God bring with him, God will resurrect with him as well. So they didn't die in vain. For they will say unto you by the word of the law, that we which are alive and remain. And that word, which are in Jesus Christ, we are alive and we are still remaining in Jesus Christ. At the time of his coming, which we are alive and remain, unto the coming of the law, shall not hinder them, shall not stop them, shall not prevent them, we shall asleep. We not stop them. So, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. The archangel is Michael. He will sound the trumpet. We call it the last trumpet. When he sound that trumpet, everyone in Christ will rise. So, with the sound of the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, the trumpet of God himself, the archangel will blow it. And when that trumpet sound, all the dead in Christ shall what? Shall rise first. The voice, the, the speaker, the, the trumpet will be so loud that the dead will hear it and they will rise. And they will be so faint that the living that are not in Christ Jesus will not hear it. It's so loud, the, the one that have died, not many years, some have even died thousands of years. They will hear it, they will rise up. And they will be so faint that even those that are alive and are not in Christ Jesus, that's why I say those that are alive and remain. They are not in Christ Jesus, they will never hear it. And those that died without Jesus Christ, they are too, they will not hear it. It's only those that are him. He is that we call him. We read in I think last week, 2 Timothy 2, verse 19. He said, The Lord knows those that are his. So only those that are his will hear the voice. And it was what I was writing. He said, As men that love God, they are his. If you love God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your soul, then you belong to him. And when that trumpet will sound, either dead or alive, you will hear. So the trumpet of God will be sounded by Archangel Michael. And those that are dead in Christ, they will rise. They will hear it and they will respond. Jesus Christ said, my sheep hear my voice. Have it? And they will respond when they hear the voice of their Lord. It will, just the way he called Lazarus. He said, he shouted, Lazarus, come forth. The same way that trumpet will sound. And that single sound will mention every person's name individually. You will hear your name, I will hear my name. Amen. amen. You didn't say amen. amen. I said you will hear your name. Amen. That single sound, you will hear your name, and the name you will respond to the voice of your God. Amen. Then which we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So it all will happen in a tinkling of eyes, seconds. The dead will hear it first, they will rise. In that same seconds, as the last one that is dead in Christ Jesus will rise up like this, the living begin to follow. All will happen in tinklings of seconds. And that one will happen today and that one tomorrow. No. In the tinkling of seconds, everything will happen. 
the dead will rise, and with it our life, and still remain Christian, shall be cut up. Not that we drop this body, this body will not drop. It will change. Only our clothing may drop. Our clothing may drop, but the body itself will be transformed. It will be changed to a celestial body. You know, now I can't pass if I want to go now to bear, how to dodge this, this platform because it can't allow me to pass. But celestial body, body that we are in heaven, can pass through things. That's so why you don't need to close your door before angel enter. Let me open your door before angel enter. You can enter through war, through anything, because they are celestial bodies. That's the body we'll be having. The body that Jesus Christ himself is wearing now. If we hear that body, because it's said that we don't even know how we look like when we see him, but we want to be assured is that when we see him, we shall be like him. First John 2.22, if I'm correct. So when we rise, we shall see him and be like him. So we all be transformed within the dead that have died many years. Some of them, even their bones are decay. Some of them, their flesh are gone. If you open their grave now, they are no longer there. It has become sand. Some are even dead in the sea. And the waves, all the fish have eaten them. Even the fish that ate them, another human being has eaten it. Amen? But on that day, everyone will come back together. All the body, wherever they may be, they will come back together. The Bible says the sea will give up the dead in them. The mountains and everything that have hidden those bodies, wherever they may be, they will gather together anywhere they may be. They will, those are the, the ones that happen and that mountain dive dry valley. When the man of God says, breathe, minister, see them, can they live? Say, so let go, you are only you know. And he said, speak to them, and he spoke. And the bones begin to, they are scattered, have you? But the bone came back to bone. As at that time, there are no flesh, only dry bone. But when the Lord spoke through the mouth of Ezekiel, the flesh that was decayed, that was gone, what happened to it? It came back again. That is the same way it will happen. Even though some, they, are, they even burned them and threw their ash to the river, everything will come back again. And they will transform all within seconds. And they will meet with the Lord in the air. And with our alive and still in Christ, remaining in Christ, we all join them also and meet the Lord in the air. So verse 17, then we are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, not in the heaven. We are? Please follow this in very carefully. That's why I'm taking time to explain them before we enter the study proper. So that when you are teaching it on your own, that to the children or you are in a class somewhere you want to teach it, you won't see something different. So please pay a very good attention. The dead will rise and the living will meet them all within seconds and they all join the Lord in the clouds and to meet the Lord where? In the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. In other words, we will not depart from him again from that time. Now we are not with him. It's only with us in the spirit but we are not with him physically. But from this event, ever again, we shall never be separated from him again. We are for comfort one another with these words. Maybe you have suffered the loss of a lost one, like myself now. Each time I read this place, I comfort myself. Believing somehow, someday, we will meet again. So comfort one another with this word. I pray we all be alive. And even we are not alive, we will be there when this trumpet will sound in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And the living and the, the dead and the living will be transformed. And they will meet the Lord in the air. We will be there in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But those that die with Jesus, without Jesus Christ, that did not love him, that did not give their life to him, that did not control their life. All the living that have forgotten the, the guide of their youth, they will not hear the sound of the trumpet. And they will never meet the Lord in the air. They will remain here. And they will remain here to their own time of judgment. Now, our memory verse for this evening is taken from Revelation 25 to 6. It's in your manner. Revelation 25 to 6. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years we are finished. Now, our word, you know, we have said at rapture, the dead will rise, Abby. Yes. Only the dead in Christ. There are also some millions that died 
but they are not in Christ. They will see the meaning in the grave, Abby. Are you following, please? Those ones, they will not rise until the thousand years is over. They will remain in the grave where they are until the millennial reign. In the list of events we, we created, we, we said last time, millennial reign is one of them. That's the thousand years of Jesus Christ. The rapture is not the same thing. Just, I will tell you what the rapture is very soon. Just like the door that open to the OT. So, the, those that, are, that miss the rapture, even though they are dead, but they didn't hear the trumpet because they didn't belong to Jesus Christ, they will remain where they are until the thousand years are over. And the living too, that are alive but didn't hear the trumpet, they will still be here. And they may experience the thousand years, but that doesn't mean they are safe. We can get there, we know some of these things. Now, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years we are finished. This is the first resurrection. In other words, the first resurrection begins. That is the first set of people that rise from the that raised, that God raised from the dead and mass after the death of Jesus Christ. It's called the first resurrection. None of us will miss it in Jesus' mighty name. He now said, Blessed and holy is seed that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. In other words, if anyone miss this first resurrection, the person is automatically condemned to the second death. And that second death is the, is the death in the lake of fire. That's what we call the second death. The, when the, the, all the enemy of God shall be transformed and shall be thrown into the lake of fire. You can see that in, um, let's see that, Revelation 21. So the first resurrection is those that go with the Lord in the rapture. Why the second resurrection is those that miss the rapture, but the Lord will wake them up at their own time to be judged. And they will be judged to be thrown into the lake of fire. We will not be in that, among that list in Jesus' mighty name. And that's why by God's grace we do whatever we can do as human beings not to miss the false resurrection. Say to yourself, I will not miss that false resurrection. Say boldly in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not miss that false resurrection in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now let's see Revelation 20. 20 rather. Revelation 20. I read from verse 11. Revelation 20, verse 11. And I saw the great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, now they are rising up, stand before God. These are not the first set of people that were rising up. These are the second one now. And a book was opened, and that book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged. And books were open, and that book was open to the book of life. The first was plural book, second was singular book. And in this book, book of life, the dead we are judged out of those things she are written in the many books according to their words. And the sea gave all the dead which are in them, and the hell, and death and hell, that's his grave, deliver up the dead which are in them, and they will judge every man according to their words. Death and hell, that's his grave, we are cast into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is what? The second death. You will not go there in Jesus' mighty name. That is said, blessed, privileged, fortunate are those that did not miss the first resurrection. Because once they are partaker of the first resurrection, the second death has no power over them. In other words, they will not be partakers of the second death. Let's read that together, one to go. But the red of the dead live not again until the thousand years we are finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign within a thousand years. Revelation 25 to 6. So we begin the eschatology study of the last day event. Today, by God's grace, the study of the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. Jesus has promised his disciples when he was going, and as men that believe in him of all ages, 
that I go to repair a place for you. And if I go and repair a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I will faithfully serve him in this place. John 14, 2 to 3. So he's coming back to take his own to himself. It is, however, written that his coming will be as thief in the night. Let's see 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 2. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 2 is, is the Bible study. So, expectedly, we should open several scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 2. For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comment as a thief when in the night. It's unlike modern thief that we write later and say we are coming next week. Thief, the original thief, thief in their research, don't write later. They come when you least expect them. You will not experience them in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. So that's what the Lord is telling us here. That they will come as a thief in the night. That fan is not reaching that girl, so she's sweating. Can you just take her to where she can ask, uh, have uh, fresh bread or fresh air? Praise the Lord. Let's take Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Second Peter 3, verse 10. Second Peter 3, verse number 10. Second Peter 3, verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth and all the works that are herein shall be burned up. That's another reference to that. It will come like a thief in the night. Now, the day of the Lord is already referred to two different days. It can be the day of rapture. It will come unexpected. Or even at the second coming too, it will also come in the day when no man is spared. That's a difference between the two. We're going to know it in the course of all this study. Just pay close attention. So, it is, however, note, it will be sudden as the Lord will have the wheat separately from the tear that we studied last week. You know, you say, let the tear and the wheat grow together, Abby. Yeah. But at the right time, I will separate them. And this is separation now. And that's why when the trumpet is blown, only those in Christ will hear the wheat. The tear, they will not hear. And so they will not be taken again. So therefore, rapture can be defined as a sudden, but expected, because we are expecting it. Sudden taking away of believers in Christ from the earth to meet the Lord in the air. Not in the heaven, but to meet the Lord in the air, in the cloud. Just up here, we see what's going on on earth, why we are there with the Lord. And you will be there for everything. That is what we call rapture. To be picking everybody at the same time all over the world. And we pick them to himself. Like magnet, we pick iron. That's how the Spirit of God will pick every believer, dead or alive, to meet the Lord in the air. Rapture is not the same thing as second coming of Christ. The rapture is the first event in the series of events that we eventually culminated or lead to Christ's second coming at the end of this age. When the rapture will take place, the Lord will be in the air. He will blow, blow the trumpet, and the trumpet will sound in the air of every believer and will transform them, dead or alive, and will take them to go and meet him in the air. So himself will not come physically to the earth. But at the second coming, that's after many things have happened in the, in the sky, we should be learning by God's grace. At the second coming, the Lord will now come with everyone that will be raptured. Now come physically to the earth. That's what we call the second coming of Jesus Christ. Do get different now. Huh? In the rapture, the Lord will not come to the earth himself. He will just be in the heaven. Just like mommy is in the room. And now call faith. Faith is just here and onto the room, correct? That, and that one is different from when I leave the room and I go to the parlor and I say, faith, come. That's a different thing. Are you following at all? That's how it is. So the rapture, the Lord will be in the air. From there we call by the trumpet of the archangel and every believer will meet him in the air. Why the second coming? After seven years with him in the air, together we now come to the earth with him. That's what Enoch said in that Jude that said the Lord will come with the 10,000 of his saints. And we now come, that's the second coming. That one we now, we now come physically and land on Mount Olivet. Everybody will be there. 
together with him. On both occasions, once we, miss, once we are in the rapture, automatically you are qualified for the second coming. But once we miss the rapture, you are not so qualified for the second coming. That's what the Bible is saying, that memory verse. We will not miss any of this event in Jesus' mighty name. So as soon as this age we are, we are in the age of the church now, the age of grace, a time we come, this, this age we finish. And then, by that, after, once that take place, the church age has ended. Tribulation begins immediately. Then, the saints will be in the air with the law for seven years. So the rapture will take place to begin what we call the marriage supper of the Lamb in the air for seven years. And every believer will be with him in that place. So we see the study in three quick parts. Number one, we are not without hope, which I've already explained. Believers don't mourn. Because even when nobody, so if I raise anybody transform, it can be painful, but we are sure we see each other again. Amen? When I was very small, like this song I used to like to sing, my grandpa don't like it. And it's gone now. When to know, I pray that we have a time we will free in Jesus' mighty name. He died a, a good, in a good old age for, a, for, his, for, his, for his type. I pray I live above him in Jesus' mighty name. You know, I will sing in Jerusalem on high. My song and city is my home when I die. That center of my bliss. I like the Yoruba, Yoruba version. I've just been enjoying myself. My grandpa will say, shut up your mouth there. Who want to die? <laughs> Who do you want to kill? Because that song, they only sing it on burial ground. It's wrong. It's not a burial song. It's a song you sing to remind yourself that's a home you are going to. Amen? Amen. Just like somebody in a in long journey. I remember when I finally got to Kano, one day I broke down, I was crying. I was missing home. I wish I was home again. You know, no matter how you travel, you will always miss home. Because home is home. So that is how it is with brethren. When you are here, you must, there is a place you are go. You are going. Jesus Christ, I'm going to prepare a place for you. His father's home. We are our father's home. So we are not without hope. So we are, we are singing Jerusalem on high. Don't be afraid. It's a song of hope. And sing it at will. It's not a better song. Is that okay? Yes. And God bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Anytime I sing that song, I always remember my grandpa. You never sing that song when the man is there. We are not without hope. So we have hope that it's a home we are going to. Number two, the dead will rise before the living. Not the living before the dead. The dead before the living. Number three, we see why is rapture important? Reasons for the rapture. Reason for the rapture. This is my own copy of the hunting. My own copy. I wrote something in it with red barrel. Okay. Yeah, you are the one that picked my copy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. God bless you in Jesus' mercy. When I need a reference, a reference you tell me. Because I mean, like learning it. Now, let's begin with the first one. We are not without hope. Either in this world or in the world to come, we are not without hope. And if by any reason anybody has gone and you are missing that person, just don't worry. We are not without hope. God has not called us to serve, is to serve him in vain. He said, I have not called the house of Jacob in vain. Jeremiah 30, 22, which is our first memory verse as a church, he said, I will be your God. It shall be what? My people. That is the first reward he has promised us. Don't you say privilege to have him as our God? It's a privilege. So that's the first reward of, of our response to him. In uh, Exodus 6, verse 2, Leviticus 26, verse 12, he said the same thing. I will be your God. You will be my people. That is the first reward. And the second is that he said he has not called us in vain. That's Isaiah 45, verse 19. I have not called the house of Jacob in vain. Let's see that song. He said, I'm not speaking in hiding in secret place. I've not declared in secret place. I'm not saying it in secret. So that you know, if you say, I don't, you don't understand what I mean. I said it openly. Isaiah 45, verse 19. I have not spoken in secret or in a dark place of the earth. I said not to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteously. In other words, I will not lie. I declare things that are right. So, even in this world, we will be blessed. Jesus even said, he said, that anything you lose, 
husband, wife, children, house. And he said, you repay re- 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 everything back in this world. And the next, eternal life. So God has not called anyone of us in vain. The first reward is himself. He make, call, he make himself our God. What is the first reward? Say it boldly. Himself. He make himself our God. It's a big privilege to call him Father. The second reward is that even while here, there are blessings. He said to Abraham, I will multiply you. I will increase you. Even your children. As a matter of fact, the whole nation of the heart will be blessed because of you. So, and to cap it all, there's a home we are going to. So we are not without hope. And those that, if by any reason they have been transformed from our means into the other world there, we are not without hope. He has not called us to a hopeless and fushionless service that begin and end on that. First Corinthians 15, verse 19, it says, If only in this world we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. So we are not only hopeful in this world, but even in the world to come, there is hope for us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's why you can say, if you supply my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That is in the world. Yet in the world to come to, there are reward. He has not called us in vain. Colossians 1 27, Colossians 1 27, to whom God, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's another reward that we will see Christ, the hope of glory, that one day we we'll see him exactly the way he look like. If you ever see him, he's a very beautiful man. Very beautiful. And we see him in his glory in Jesus' mighty name. Say to yourself, I will see him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say boldly, I will see him. In Jesus' mighty name. My brethren, if there's anything that is keeping one going, is the knowledge of the fact that one day you will see him. Exactly the way he is. If you think you have seen him before, you are not only seeing him. You will see him the way he is. The one you have seen him drawing. It's far from him. It's very, very fine. Very, very wonderful. When you see through his eyes, very transparent. And yet you cannot see through it. And yet transparent. Very beautiful. Very wonderful man to see. Very, very beautiful. I pray God we open our eyes to see him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Say a good amen. amen. Very beautiful man to see. He's, he's, you, he's so full of glory that you can't come near to him. And yet, his presence is drawing you to himself. You get that? You can't come near, and yet you can't run from him. He's so wonderful. Verse 16 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 16, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God, even our own Father, which have loved us and given us everlasting consolations, this everlasting comfort and good hope through grace. So comfort your hearts because we have hope in Christ Jesus. If that is all we even gain in being a Christian, to see Jesus is enough. I tell you the truth. If all we gain in being a Christian to see Jesus Christ is what? It's enough. It's enough. It's a person worth seeing. It's a person was seen. When you get to his presence, you will forget you have ever been in the world. You will not remember for a second you have ever been in the world. His presence will take away all sorrows. He said, We wipe away all sorrow and we dry all our tears. Just a second in his presence, you will forget you have ever been in the world. How much remembering you have ever experienced sorrow. It's a wonderful thing to see him. Not only when you get to heaven, even on that year, I pray that we open your eyes. Just see a little of him in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say a good amen, brethren. Amen. You will see him in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So that you understand what I'm describing. When I'm saying it, I wish I can describe it more in a way you understand it better. But it's a beautiful person to see. Very, very wonderful to see him. Our sojourn with him will not end on this side of the river Jordan. Time is no barrier to him. He said in that John 14, verse 1 to 3. Can you see that please? John 14, verse 1 to 3. Himself said that thing. Himself made that promise. 
and he has never found to be a liar. What he said, exactly what he will do. John 14, verse 1 to 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. That's why I don't sorrow. Don't be, don't allow the devil to distract your, your eyes with what is happening around you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me, that in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And that coming again is in that rapture. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Amen. I receive unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. We will never be separated from him again. Just imagine our president. If as his son want to enter Asorok, the national house, will they stop you? Do you need any permit? No, it's your father's house. As at, as at that time he's there, it's your what? Your father's house. That's how it will be for us in eternity in Jesus' mighty name. So we are not without hope. In that place, time is useless. We will be in our father's house. So death is never going to separate us from God we love and we have served with all our life. In timeless eternity, we shall also be with him. Christians don't die, we sleep. So we might rise and we might rise and rest with him in our father's house for all eternity. So Christians don't die, they only sleep. Whichever way the death comes, it's only that they sleep. At the right time, we shall all meet together in our Father's house. All believers in all ages, dead or alive, shall be united at his feet and in his kingdom and at the end of all things. Every one of us shall be united with him in the, uh, in the Father's house at the end of all things. And that's the hope of glory. That's why sometimes we suffer. Even though we are, the Lord has promised us many things on earth here, but the world may deny us those things. Not God denying us. Sometimes the world may deny us. But we don't too bother, even when the world denies us, because we know that one day we will be within. And that will settle all the problems we have ever had on this side of the world. And that's our hope. That's our joy. That one day we shall rise and we'll be with him on the other side of Jordan, when we shall live with him forever, and we will never be separated from him again in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Bible says we have, we have read in, in Exodus, I mean, 4 Thessalonians 4, it says, comfort yourself with these words. Anytime you want to feel sad, comfort yourself with this word. Anytime sorrow you want to envelop you, comfort yourself with this word. Anytime the devil will be making jest of you, see your life now. What has happened to you now? Comfort yourself with what? With this word. First Thessalonians 5, verse 10. First Thessalonians 5, verse 10. You can begin from verse 9. For God has appointed us to rot. Talking about disciples now. But to obtain salvation, for God has not appointed us to rot. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. God has not ordained us to be destroyed. But to be saved. Final salvation in Jesus Christ now. Who died for us, this Jesus Christ, died for us, that whether we wake, that is we are alive, or we sleep, that is we are dead, we shall, we should live together within. We are for, what's the next thing? Comfort yourself together. You see, you see that always, always ending in that same word. You know we have read. It's not the same word. Because the Lord recognized the Father, we can be sorrowful. But when we remember this word, we comfort ourselves. Comfort yourself with this word. If you read the, our text too, you see the same thing in verse 18 of First Samuel chapter 4. That's the last word there in that verse 18. It says, We are for comfort one another with these words that we shall rise again. So therefore, we are not without hope. Jesus himself be our hope of glory. I pray we all get there in Jesus' mighty name. Individual of us, I love to see you there, and I know you long to see me there. I want to see Father Abraham. I want to see David. That's Solomon that have one time wife. I want to see how he look like. Self, is he a giant man or a short man? 
I want to see I'm even asking questions. How do you manage it between those 1,000 wives? Praise the Lord. So I want to see all the saints of old as men that the Lord helped to get there. I want to see them. Even Thomas that doubts, they can doubt for Africa. I want to see why do you doubt a lot among the 12? It's a beautiful thing to be in that heaven. We all be there in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Say a good amen. amen. Number two, the dead will rise before the living. The dead before the living shall rise, which we call the false resurrection. The rapture will happen, will happen in two phases of quick succession within split seconds. It will happen within seconds that if you are, like now you are inside the church, God forbid you are still here. And you say, let me go outside and go and see what is happening. If it's the same thing outside, it has finished. It will be so quick. Those in church that day and they are in Christ, they are gone. Maybe those are not in church. Maybe they are not in Jesus Christ and they are inside church. Too, but you don't belong to Jesus Christ. They didn't go. They will say, let me go and see if this, this happened that day in church too. Before you get there, the thing has even finished. It happened within a very short time. And yet in two phases. The first phase is the resurrection of all believers who died in Jesus Christ. Now, there was a resurrection that happened when Jesus Christ himself died and resurrected. Let's see Matthew, Matthew what? Princess? Matthew, I wrote in down on your hand. Matthew 27. Can you open your to Matthew 27? You understand what I'm saying if you read that place. It may give you a little understanding of what we are saying now. Matthew 27, verse 21 to... 51 to 53. Matthew 27, 51 to 53. Matthew 27, 51 say, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two. Let's start from verse 10, number 50. You know, Jesus Christ was on the cross now. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, he dead up the ghost. That's when he was on the cross. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent into two from the top to the bottom, and the earth did shake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were what? Open. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. People like Abraham, like David, all of them that are in the grave before now. Are you following? All the saints that are in the grave before the, the coming of Jesus Christ, they arose and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, when the centurion and, uh, appeared unto many, let me start there, so that, that is enough for us. So you see, that's the first, that's the, is a, those that died in the Old Testament, they rose with Jesus Christ when he resurrected. See that place in verse 10, so that I won't, you won't miss a, a serious point there. The grave, when Jesus Christ cried on the cross, the cutting of the temple was Cross the two abbey. At the same time, there was an earthquake. And the rust, the rent. The grave, they opened, but the body did not come out. They were awoken, but they stay in the grave. Because Jesus Christ will be the first from the dead. That's what it's called the first from the dead. The firstborn of God. It must be the first from the dead. Even though they were awoken already, but they did not leave the grave. Are you following? Now, let's see that verse 52. And the grave are open, and many bodies of the saints which let arose and came out of the grave. After what? After Jesus Christ has resurrected. So they waited for him to be the first to rise, to raise, to be risen from the grave. Then they follow him and they rose with him. And for 40 days, they are, people say they are seeing him in the city of Jerusalem. Amen? Before they are taken away. So the Old Testament saying they are gone. Are you following? So the first, the rapture is strictly for those that die after Jesus Christ as saint, as righteous people, those that believe in him. It's strictly for Christians. Are we together? Which means that people like Cain that die in sin, they are still in the grave till now. They didn't rise. People that die as unrighteous people, they are still in the grave now. It didn't rise. It's only those that are righteous saints that rose with the Lord on the third day. Then, we that are now die after that, that's what I call the first resurrection. It's the first mass 
resurrection of the dead from the grave after Jesus Christ. Since Jesus Christ came and left, nobody has, no mass and mass people rose from the dead. No, none has happened. It only happened when Jesus Christ come at rapture and it is called the first resurrection. So the first phase is the resurrection of all believers who died in Christ Jesus. I pray we live for Jesus Christ in Jesus' mighty name. And if by reason of death, we also die in him in the mighty name of Jesus. Because it is written that either we are dead or alive, we shall all reign with him. We belong to him. So therefore, if anybody has passed, and if by God's grace we live our life, we grow old in Jesus' mighty name, if the Lord tarry, we live our life and we see past and go the way of our fathers, we will wait for him until the rapture of the saints. So the dead in Christ will rise first. And the same second, after the dead have been risen up, the sudden taking away of all living believers too will happen. They said, all which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall also join the Lord and join the resurrected saints and meet the Lord in the air and never to be separated from him again forever. We all be part of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So that is what we are all waiting for now. If it happens now at this moment, the dead will, the grave will be open and they will live. And we that are also alive, we join them and we go to the Lord in the air. The Lord knows how to bring their body. They will not rise as bones. They will not rise as spirit. They will rise, with, they will have a body, celestial body. The Lord will turn their body to celestial body. How he will do it? Only God. The same way Jesus Christ rose from the grave. No, it doesn't, when he rose, Jesus Christ rose from the grave, he didn't leave his body there. Have we? He rose with his uh, body. That is exactly how it will look like. He will rise with our body, transform to be like him, and we meet him in the air. That's why I say deep, call it unto the deep, because we are part of him. The event will mark the beginning of the great tribulation. Immediately the rapture will take place, and the Christians are no longer on the earth. Immediately the Antichrist, that man of sin, will take over. And that will be the beginning of the great tribulation. As we are in the air with the Lord for seven years, how many years? Seven, seven years. On the, in the world too, seven years, the Antichrist will reign. That's why I pray we will not be here. Amen. Some believers will miss that trip. And they will try to still be a Christian. Because there will be mark taken. You can't buy, you can't sell, you can't do anything without the mark of the beast. You can't open an account. You can't do anything without the mark of the beast. And the environment will be harsh. I think Rono will not be here in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. So there will be, it will be difficult to produce anything from the farm. You will depend on government. And those that are here then, some see try to be a believer, will not take the mark, and not take the mark, they will suffer. If you have ever seen suffering, you have not seen suffering. If you go by the word, the Bible describe it, it's said to be a great tribulation, so much that there have never been the type in the world. There have never been the type in the world that the world will experience when that time comes. I pray we will not be here to experience that in Jesus' mighty name. So immediately the rapture will take place. That same second, the Antichrist will take over. It's already in the world, preparing himself to take over, but uh, the church being here is the one delaying him and not allowing him to take over. The Lord is not giving him the power to take over. It's already here, according to what the Bible says in First John chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. It said the man of sin is already here. We'll see that later in the next, in the next part. But let's focus on what we have now at hand. Let's see Matthew 24, verse 21 to, and 24. Matthew 24. If you read from verse 1, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and a disciple came to him and showed him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be let one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And that's why today I pity the church of God. I pray God himself will pity the church. They will be emphasized on building these days. And so the, the faith of the temple of old will not be fellow building. The church Jesus Christ here, the building, says, see this building. 
beautiful. There was never be any building ever built by man as magnificent as that temple. It's the most perfect work any man has ever done. Second to it is aeroplane. Aeroplane is almost faultless. The first work that human being has ever done that is practically faultless. Perfect is the temple. The building of the temple itself. Because God personally supervises. The Bible says that there is no single noise of hammer in that temple. Every stone, not just stone, they used to build it. Every stone will be cut outside and they will bring it to the place and it will fit it perfectly. Even now, go and ask a big layer. They can never build this fence without cutting. They'll be cutting, cutting, cutting. Because it's not fit. But the Bible says every stone was cut from outside and they will bring it to the site and it will fit in. Is that ordinary? It's not ordinary. So it's the only work that man has ever done that is perfect. Second to it is aeroplane. If you see aeroplane crash, in nine out of ten times, it's human error. It's human error. In nine out of ten times, if aeroplane crash, it's what? Human error. The thing is so perfect that on its own it will not crash. And in all that, the natural Jesus, look at how perfect this temple is. Jesus said, time will come. You will not see one stone on top of under. Everything is broken down. See the craze of churches today. Our church is the most beautiful. It's the biggest temple. They can sit 500,000, 2 million at the same time. Do you know the, big, the, te- the first 10 largest churches in, in the world is in Nigeria? And yet the poorest nation in the world is also in Nigeria. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So the grace to build temple, it will fade away. It is better we build lives. It's good to build churches, but don't build one and destroy it and keep building and keep building. So much you forget that you need to build lives. Like one of my friends, senior pastor then, was building one. The cathedral was already big, and they said want to pull it down and expand it again. People now said that in this church we need the word of God. That uh, we have suffered the word too much. People that come before you, they didn't need teacher like that. We want a teacher, one that can tell us the word of God and build us and build our life. The man said, when I finish building the church, I will build life, according to what I heard that he said. The very time he finished building the church, I doubt he spent three months before they transferred him. All the years he spent there building the temple of what use it is. The temple that I built about 10 years ago now, is it not, not old again now? Is it not old again? It's already old again now. But if they have built life, that life will remain fresh forever. Because it's important we build life. So the rapture, we the the ten job will tell them, don't focus on the building, focus on the life inside the building. Verse 21. Immediately the rapture takes place, for then shall the great tribulation, for then shall be for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, not ever shall be. It should be a very terrible time that has never happened before or to this time. And I said those days be shortened. Just seven years, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, the elect in that place talking about the Jews. Because it's majorly for them. Not as at, at now, they don't believe in Jesus Christ. So that is meant for them to be turned to their Lord. So for their sake, the days shall be shortened to just three and a half years, three and a half years. The last three and a half years will be shot in. Otherwise, nobody will be saved. We don't be here to witness any of them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, rapture is the beginning of the, all this event that will end with the coming of the Son of God. Blessed are all believers who are called by rapture to meet the Lord in the air, to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's one of the reasons why we are rapture. Not just to meet him in the air and be looking at his face, but to also meet him and attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are the wife, the church. And it's also our marriage supper. You know, let me explain that a little from the woman perspective. Marriage supper is since as marriage reception. Okay? When you gather them out and you treat them, and you must marry your wife. Which comes first, the marriage or the supper? The marriage, I mean. Everybody say, come and attend my reception, and they're not wedded. You attend. There must be wedding first, Abby, before inception. So Jesus Christ is will invite us to his inception, which takes place in the heaven. 
He told the disciples, he said, I will not drink this thing with you again on the, on the day of Passover. That I will drink with you in my father's. So that's where he will drink with us and, and dine with us and the, and the marriage support the lamb. But the marriage itself took place when he paid the bride price on the cross. That's why we, are, we always tell people in this church that marriage did not take place on the altar. As a matter of fact, church marriage is a waste of time. If I'm aware as a pastor, I will never conduct a wedding. Because it's a waste of time. The real wedding takes place, immediately you pay your dowry. One dowry has been paid. That's, the end. That's why when the man dowry has been paid, she belongs to another person. Uh, I'm divorced. Come and marry me. If your dowry be paid, yes. Then you are not my wife. Are you following now? So, wedding in church, just a woman, 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 what do I call it now? Woman, woman making. Woman activity to just to make herself happy. After your wedding, and you come, and pray, pray for me and bless our union, our family. As we start working together, I can bless you. But, I will say, May you pay your dowry out to the Yahweh. Eloman God or Anyoku. But some church will say, don't touch her until you join your daughter. It's a waste of time. So just can't pay the bride price. Say you are bought with a price. You pay the price, the price in the some blood on Calvary. So we are married to him. Apostle Paul say, I've not brought you to another husband. Say, I've espoused you to only one husband, Jesus Christ. We are married to him. We are his wife. We are his. He paid for us with the blood. He has paid our bride price. And when the time comes, he will take us to meet with himself. And it's that marriage supper. If you officially introduce us to his father, Daddy, this is my wife. And we all enjoy with him in that air. He will be there in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Revelation 25. To six, Revelation twenty, five to six. Please do whatever you can do to be part of this thing. Revelation five to six. I think we have seen down before. Let's see, verse uh, nine, Revelation nineteen, verse nine. Revelation nineteen, verse nine. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they, which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, This thing. A true sin of God. So I spent that call to the marriage support of the Lamb. We be blessed. So we are the wife being celebrated. Why the saint of old will be the witnesses that come to dine with us. Are you following? They be the one that we attend that program with us. And we all rejoice with us. We are the wife of the law. The Old Testament church is the wife of the father. The Jews. Okay? God say, I'm your husband. You have no other wife or husband. So the New Testament church is the wife of the father. Why the New Testament church is the wife of the son? Do you get that now? You are not answering me. Are you confused? Let's see Romans 14 verse 10. Romans 14 verse number 10. Romans 14 verse number 10. Sometimes when I look at your face, like you are tired or you are thinking. Or oh, it's taking too long. And I think it take too long. Right? But why does thou judge thy brother? Or why does thou set and not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That same marriage supper is where we be rewarded by reason of God judging all our works and give every man his own work according as they have done while they are in the flesh. So that seven years, many things happened there. That seven years, the same time that we marry supper of the Lamb, we discuss it. That same time, there will be judgment of the, of the, of the saints. We are everybody be rewarded according to the work they have done while they were in the world and serving the Lord. And how they have done it with the, and according to the intention of their heart, they will all be rewarded at that time. But first and foremost, before we the reward, just be there first. Abby? That's the most important. When you are there, then when David said, if they make me a gatekeeper, an usher, I'm okay. Oh. That will be a king in hell. Abi? And the man is place is sure. Matter of fact, he's the only king in the Bible that God promised that when Jesus Christ comes, he will still be a king. 
is the only king in the Bible that he will also be a king under Jesus Christ when he comes and second reign. So when man was saying, ah, that man, God bless him. He said, just make me an usher. I'm okay. Maybe that's what God had. He saw the humility of his heart. You will not let be an usher. You will be a king. I pray we all remain with him too in Jesus' mighty name. Let us say a good amen. amen. So, second, second Corinthians 5, verse 10. Second Corinthians 5, verse 10. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body, according to that which he has done, whether it be good or bad. Everything will happen in that seven years. We will be welcomed with a reception. Abby? Then, after the reception, there will be a judgment seat. Jesus Christ will not sit as the husband of the church and will not judge his own church and give them reward according to their work. Crown and stars will be awarded based on what everybody has done while they are in the body in that same place. We will all get there. Lord God, Jesus. We will not get missed on the way in Jesus' mighty name. So it's our husband. He has paid the price for us. And having paid that price, we are his permanently. Lastly, reason for the rapture. Why is rapture necessary? And why is it important? Since the old saints have gone with the Lord in, when he resurrected, then those that remain after that that have died, and that will still be alive when they come, how do we go with him? As at the time Rapa was writing this thing, he was thinking he'd be alive when Jesus Christ come. He was writing with that notion. But somehow he left. Who knows? Maybe it will be alive when it happens. Who knows where we go? But it doesn't matter that we are alive or dead. The most important that we are aware we are there with him. So after the sudden disappearance of many believers, the entire world will be chaotic. Because many people will deliver, will disappear. Many daughters, many sons will disappear. Many suckling, why sucking will go. Many wives will go, leaving their husband. Many husbands will go, leaving their wives. Many children will go. Mommy and daddy are still here. And some parents will go. Children will be here because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. Many will go. They say one will be taken and under one left. Two will be in the bed. One will be taken and under one left. Two will be in the farm. One will be taken and under one left. Not that the two cannot be taken. But it's only the one, the one that are ready. And even the two not may be taken. Like one of our father in the Lord said one time that you saw it in a crowd of millions. Only is it two or three? was rapturable. I pray when we, the Lord will come, we will not miss that opportunity in Jesus' mighty name. So when people disappear suddenly, the entire world will be chaotic. The economy and the corpus will, commerce will collapse. And because everything collapses, the Antichrist will now reveal himself as the one that can solve the problem. And the whole world will be deceived by him. And for seven years, he will rule as king over the entire world while Jesus Christ is reigning in heaven, in the sky with his son. Three and a half years of peace. Man will come like a good man. There will be peace. He will, be, he will do everything. He will balance everything. Everything that spoils will be repair with all these demons. He will do many miracles. People will believe them. Then three and a half years will come again. He will now show himself in risk color. And that three and a half years is the time the trouble itself will descend. And that time, it will be too bad for anyone that is here. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Second Thessalonians. So the Antichrist is not here now because me and you are still here at this church. As soon as this church is taken away, then himself will be revealed. 2 Samuel 2, verse 3. For am I in the, okay, I'm in the first, sorry. 2, verse 3. Say, let no man deceive you. Please don't be deceived by any means. For that day shall not come, except there be falling away first. Many people will backslide. Many people will be tired of this church. Many people will feel disappointed. Many people will feel God is not answering their prayer enough. Many people will fall away. And that's one sign to show that the rapture is about to happen. Say, the day will not come. Except they are confessed, falling away. 
And it's happening now. You know that. It's happening now. Many people are in this church, but they don't even actually in this church. They are even worse than relatives outside the church. So that for uh, falling away, away from doctrines, away from from right from sanctions. Many people will not be on their own, hearing what they want to hear. So if fear of what I be falling away first, and that man of sin will be revealed, which is the son of perdition. That is the second person that will use that name was used for in the Bible. The first was Judas, then this man, and this man is the original son of perdition. Verse 4, who opposed and exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that himself will be as God, sitting in the temple of God, showing said that he is God. How many people will believe in? I pray you not be here. Please don't be here. Because it will be difficult not to believe in. The Bible says we do many wonderful things. Many miracles. As a matter of fact, it will bring the dead to life. So many people will be convinced that indeed belongs to God. And it's already happening. That man that had beard in Lagos is not even antichrist yet too. Didn't people believe him? Why did they believe him? Miracles. And there are still many of his type in the world today. And that's why there's something he's doing. Remember, somebody is doing miracle. And the dead is happening, walking. It's not a sign that God is there. You just sit down, you call your card number. And say that in your card number. They are so good. Because they are demonic. They use the power of divinations. Some of them can tell you everything you wear inside. The food you ate yesterday. And they be so correct. And because they are correct, you will believe them. The Bible says, by their words, you do what? You will know them. Mother was telling me this afternoon while we are talking. She said, when she was yet to marry, that she was invited to go and meet one white garment church like that. Where they say she go and pray so that uh, God can prosper her way and she will marry well and her marriage will not suffer and all that and all that. That she will do bathing. The one they used to do for 30 days. And they will hide that in one place. They call it Bile Yoruba. I don't know what they call it in English. You hide in one corner like that, in one room, for three days, you won't come out. Or seven days, or 21 days, depending on how many days they give you. And if you are lucky, let me not say that one. Praise the Lord. So you'll be in that room, and uh, you'll stay there. So they say, they invited her. She's a Muslim, and yet she can even see more than many Christians. They invited her to that church. She went there, and the man told her what to do. And I said, the man not gave her one black soap with which we bath for the three days. So she now got to my ask her mother that I think ah, for a church to give black soap, that she, well, especially that if you even give me soap to bath at all, it should be white soap, maybe lost, met, and mixed with some things. It should be white because church should be white. That white church be giving black thing. It sound occultic. It look like something ritual, something traditional. That church shouldn't be using black things. How can church be giving black soap? That that's why I told me, that told me I'm not going again. No, this one doesn't seem, this one doesn't look like God is in this one. No, that's a Muslim. Many Christians will take that soap and go and bath. That black soap. He said, by their foot, you know what? You will know them. You see black soap, you are still waiting for God to show you the fruit. Which one do you want to see again? I mean, pardon? I pray God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So, it is happening. Many people are falling away because they don't even know they are let from their rise. First John 2, 22. First John, are you enjoying this teaching? First John 2, 22. Who is a liar, but he that denies that Jesus Christ is the Christ. He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. And that's the major, that's why it's called Antichrist. He will walk against Jesus Christ. He will do everything to, to discredit him. Everything to discredit him. And many we believe in. See, first, chapter 4, that same place, First John chapter 4. Let me read from verse 1. Be- beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't believe every church, every prophet, every reverend. Don't believe every, every spirit. But try this spirit every day of God. Because many false, false prophets are out in the world already. Hereby we know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God. 
but every spirit that confess none that Jesus Christ come in the flesh. If that, that was the only one thing they say. You say Jesus Christ is spirit. That's why he can die on the cross. That's why nobody can cash in. It wasn't a human being. Say that any spirit that denied that Jesus Christ come in the flesh, it's not what? It's not of God. And that is the spirit of the Antichrist. We have for you have heard that it will come. Even now, it's already we are in the world. It's already in the world. What is delaying its manifestation is the church. Period. That's why we have not seen him in action. As soon as the church goes in rapture, himself he manifests himself. You can see other references on your own. So why is rapture? Number one, to gather all the saints of all ages, since Jesus Christ till now, dead or alive. That's why that we rapture. Jesus Christ will gather the, the wheat and separate from the tear. So either dead or alive, all the saints. Saint there doesn't saint there is as many that believe in Jesus Christ, we are called saints. So that means you say the word saints, you only you only think about holy people. It's holy people actually, but they are holy because Jesus Christ has washed them in his blood. Amen. Amen. Two, to be judged at the Bema seat of Jesus Christ. That's why there will be um, rapture. After the after, after the reception, then we sit all of us down. He will give us our reward. That's what we call the Bema seat of Jesus Christ. Where we all be judged. We see that too in the course of this uh, study. I think Faith wrote that one that day, Abby. Yes, God bless you, my dear. My good secretary. Number three, to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. I've said that already, Abby. That's one of the reasons why there will be rapture. I've, all the references you have seen them already, that's I'm not opening them again. They may attend the marriage supper of the Lamb. If you have ever attended any marriage reception, please attend this one. You will see there's a difference. Not only yourself will be involved as a wife, and God and Jesus Christ will introduce you formally to his father. Daddy, this is a woman or this is a wife I bought with my blood. And we introduce her to his father as a single bride. Amen. I I expect to see that day. I want to see the father himself. Say to yourself, I want to see the father himself. As a as a as a as a bride, the wife of his son in Jesus' name. And you will see Abraham, you will show Abraham, Abraham, come, come and see my wife. You know, they are the they are the invited guests. We are not the guests, we are the wife. Abby? The invited guests are the angels and the saint of old. Abraham, come. David, king of Israel, come. Come and see my wife. And formally we introduce us to them. And then he will now sit us down, give us our reward. If then you sang with your heart, you will get reward. If then you sang and you are angry with your heart, the power said, wait, talk to me, I don't like it. Or you are singing. And you say, they will not have voice now. You will modulate, go up, go modulate, and they will clap for you. You are praising yourself. You will receive the word. Just, just be there first. Abby? Go many people will not even get there to start with. I will be there in Jesus' mighty name. Yes. So, number four, to reveal the wicked the man of sin. If we did not go, it will not be revealed. It's already in the world, but it has not been revealed. I will not wait to be, to be revealed in Jesus' mighty name. Then to be with Jesus Christ forever. To repair the saints for the second coming of Jesus Christ. It is said that in Jude that the Lord will come with ten thousand and thousand of his saints. So the second coming of Jesus Christ is that time. That we now come together within other seven years. We now come physically together to this world again. That is what we call the second coming of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. To repair them for the millennial reign of Christ. When we come within that second coming together, when Jesus Christ now come physically again, second time, that is when we now, from that day, we now start 1,000 years of reign. Peace. No death will be arrested. Devil will be arrested. All the demons will be arrested. I want to cause Wala. They will jail them. So that nobody will commit sin throughout that 1,000 years. Because the spirit of difficulty that they will make another commit sin be arrested. Then it will be a thousand year of peace. There will not be a single accident. Not a single one. Nobody will die. For that 1,000 years, nobody will die. The entire world will be at peace. God will now, that's what Jesus Christ planned for Adam originally. In Garden, as it means, Jesus Christ will now come and do it. You know, it's, it's the last, second Adam. Uh -huh. In the, the, the is it second Adam or the, or the, the, the last Adam? So, sorry, second man, but the last Adam is the last Adam. So we now come and show what Adam failed 
you not come and do it for 1,000 years. There will be peace on that. So all of us will reign with him. If you feel like going to Jerusalem, you can say, let me go and see the law. You are there. I want to go and see America. You know you are thinking about this, you are there. You'll be a terrestrial body. Amen. You are there. Oh, I want to go and see Jesus. I want to go and play with him. You are there. This afternoon, I feel like talking to Michael. Michael, I want to go and talk to him. Before you are already before Michael. And you will just. Oh, I want to go and see Father Abraham. I want to go and why do you even obey God when he call you? You just went, not seen, not knowing years ago. You will you'll be there. I want to go and see my message. I want to go and talk to my message. Why, why do you shake that lady away? Are you too, you are jealous you? And he will explain things to you. You will be there before her. We will all be there in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please say a good amen. amen. So that is what is, that's why that should be rapture. Without that, the second coming of Jesus Christ will not take place. To appear then for the millennial reign, to take part in the first resurrection. That's what I mean to write there. To take part in the first resurrection. The only the death resurrects. The living don't resurrect. Abi? The living be transformed. So if we are, if Jesus Christ tarry, we grow and we die. We will take part in the first resurrection. But if we are alive, we only join those that have the first resurrection, Abi? And go with the Lord in the air. So to take part in the first resurrection, that we are, if you are dead, if you are alive, just be transformed and join the dead in Christ on that day. To harvest the wheat from the tears we see before in Matthew 30, 31 and 38. Then to begin to crystal the tribulation, which is also called Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah 30, verse 7 is called Jacob's trouble. And all that event of the last day that will end with throwing the demons, devil, and the antichrist all of them to the hellfire, and everyone that believes in them. We begin with rapture. Ma? That's another one. That's, that's when we put before the 1,000 years. So, after, after that, amen. So, when everything I've, I said, the first is the rapture. The last thing on the line now, I've done many things in between. The last thing on the line will be to cast the devil and all his cores into the lake of fire. Then, everything is ended. You will all be there in Jesus' mighty name. But there are many things in between the rapture and the final judge, judgment that we throw everything that belongs to hell to hell fire, which is lake of fire. Between those two, there are many things in between, which we already study now. I pray as the Lord have studied this thing, God will open our eyes to them in Jesus' mighty name. There are many things I see out of this place to introduce us to the saints of old. Abraham, David, Enoch, Abel. We introduce all of us to them. And to even and most importantly, to introduce us to his father. Daddy, this is a person I die for. And we'll be there in Jesus' mighty name. So that is the rapture of the church. It's the gate that opens to what will happen on the last day. The rapture, marriage supper, and Bema seat of Christ, coming together, reward, coming together, introduce us to the Father, then coming together with him on the second second um, Second coming, which is the tribulation, that be among and the the uh, the beast will be arrested, and the which is the antichrist thrown to thrown to the lake of fire, the devil will be arrested, thrown to the paternal pit to be going there and be going there for that one thousand years, we reign with Christ. After which we go back with him again, we leave the world for some time, and that will be released again to turn them again. After that, Jesus Christ and the whole world will be summoned again, second resurrection, and everything will finish on the lake of fire. But we are already with the Lord, and we will never leave him again, Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know if it is clear enough. Any question, please? The rapture of the church. By now, we know that there's a difference between the rapture and, and second coming now. Abby? Mm-hmm. The rapture of the church. Yes, brother, what is the question? Can I just arrange for a mic? Hallelujah. Any person that have question? Okay. Any other question? We should ask question on this kind of topic. Here. Praise Mommy. the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, sir, brother. Uh, sir, I want to ask about uh, what is the significance of River Jordan? Yes, because I could remember then we always we watch a film then that when the man died, 
he first, when the spirits, the ghosts left, he stayed at River Jordan. So an angel now came to pick the man to cross that. Uh, so I want to ask, what is the significance of that River Jordan to the rapture and resurrection too? Actually, River Jordan is just like a term that we use to describe the side we are in eternity. You know, we are also in eternity now. This is eternity that has to do with time. Okay? There's a timeless eternity. There's a time, the work continues. It has no end as long as God wants it to continue. Have you? So it's eternal. Why there's a timeless eternity where there is no time. Now, when the children of Israel were coming from, the, from Egypt, when they are coming from Egypt, the last barrier they had before they crossed to the place was River Jordan. Remember that? So they had to cross that river before they entered. That was where Moses reached. And God said, you cannot cross. And God allowed him to see. See that side. Just took, took, God took him to the highest mountain. And from the mountain, you can see above the river. He saw the promised land. But he said, you can't go. This is the fathers, you will go. So from that time, believers, Christians of all ages, always refer to the side we are now, where we are alive, I decide Moses' words as River Jordan. That when you die, we will transform to our own promised land, which is heaven now. Do you get it now? Just as Israel crossed to their promised land. So we are on this side of River Jordan now. We are on the earth. That's why there are films that just show that you are there before. Angel came and come and transport you. Just a way of describing how it will look like. So we are on this side of Jordan now. We can only gaze, like Moses gazed, and saw the promised land. Which we can only imagine how it will look like. It's true what we read in the Bible. We have not seen it before. Even when you see in the vision, you are not even seeing it all the same. Okay? We only gaze and see it. But a time will come. We not only, not it don't be vision, it don't be dream, it will be real. We see it in the real sense of it. And that's the promised land, the heaven we are going to. Is it clear now? That's why we always use that terminology. Okay. Mommy Kenny. Any other question? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um it has to do with um the that text, Matthew twenty seven, fifty one to fifty three. Okay. Um, this is my first time of kind of. So I want to. Kind of uh, seen it. No, I've seen it before, but you explain it as the first resurrection or something it's of that. It's not the first resurrection, sir. It's not the first resurrection. Okay. It's the resurrection that came with the reason of the Lord Himself. Okay. 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 The first resurrection will be the one we are waiting for now. Okay. That involves Christians that died in Jesus Christ after himself rose from the grave. Just like we said, let's use our church now, for example. We, let's say we, be, we, we began this church, May Abbey, up to this time. Our first year will be this May. So we counted our first year from the first day, Abby, we began to the next May uh, 14. The same way, from the day Jesus Christ rose from the grave, since that time till now, no mass resurrection of people from the grave. I mean, if I know, nobody has coming from the grave. People can die, be in the freezer, and they say something touched them, they come back to life. But nobody has been buried. That's why when somebody is buried, that's the end. Don't pray again for it to come. You must say, say, God, touch him, let him come alive. Or possibly, whatever. But once he's in the grave, that's the end. So no one, after that joke have risen from the grave, no dead have risen from the grave again. The only time people will rise from the grave again is what we call the first resurrection. That's called the first after the death of Jesus Christ and resurrection. But at the Resurrection of Jesus Christ, when he gave up the ghost, they have said there was an earthquake that shook the ground. And the righteous sin that died before that time, they were awoken 
by reason of the son of Jesus Christ on the grave, I mean on the cross. Are you following now? When he said, Father, Father, your hand, I come as praise, he shouted. They heard it. You know, it's their God. It was the Lord that followed them. Abby? So they heard his voice and they woke up. They opened their eyes. They were wondering, what happened? What do we hear? But they remain in the grave. Because Jesus Christ must be the first that must come out from the grave. And it is then when he was uh, rose up on the third day, they now came out from their grave themselves. During the first resurrection, they took part with Jesus Christ in his own resurrection. They have risen, they have gone with him. When he left, they are no longer there. They've left with him. Are you following? They didn't go back there and go and sleep again. I know they left, they've gone with him. When he went to the, to the air, to the father, they've gone with him. Where he kept them, only him knows. But they didn't go back to the grave. They left with him. And those that will now believe in Jesus Christ that died, will now raise with him again at the rapture. Amen? If not that he told us that we be in the air with him, I would say we don't even know where we will be. Are you following now? And the air will be, is it here over Nigeria or over America, over Jerusalem? Only him that know that one. But we know that we will be in the air with him. So those are other mysteries that we are not told. But the, those that rose with him at his own resurrection are the saints of old. Old Testament saints. But the new Testament saints are waiting for him to call again. You know they heard his voice on the cross. They rose with him. We now we are waiting for his voice again by the trumpet to rise with him. I want to do this clear now. Yes, we are waiting for the first direction. As at now, me and you are not even waiting. It's the dead that are waiting. It's for the dead. As I say, the dead in Christ, we do what? We rise first. It's only the dead that resurrect. But we that see our life and we are believers, we just be changed, we transform. No, we cannot fly now. Jump and see. You come down. But Jesus Christ will not change that your body. Okay? You will not fly with him. And not go and meet him. But if for any reason the rapture is delayed and we will grow old and we die, we will not be part of those that are waiting for the resurrection. And if anybody see alive like that time, they will now know that we join us when do you get the two now? So the dead are waiting to be resurrected. They are sleeping. So Joker must come and wake them and come with him. While the living, they're not sleeping. They just transform and go and meet him. And if Itari, which we don't know, Itari, or we are still alive, then if you grow old and die, you go and join those that are waiting for the first resurrection. Is it clear now? Praise the Lord. So that's how it is. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you. Can you bow here and say, Father, please prepare me for your coming in Jesus' mighty name. I will not miss this rapture in Jesus' name. Either dead or alive, I will be part of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. If I'm among the dead, I will wait for the resurrection. If I'm among the living, I will be transformed and raised with, and will transform and fly to go and meet my Lord. Either I'm alive or dead, Lord, count me among those that will go between the mighty name of Jesus. When the road is called yonder, Lord, make me among those that will go with you in Jesus' mighty name. I will not miss this opportunity. What is in your life, brethren, I miss this opportunity? Ask God to have mercy upon you and give you the grace to drop them and to do what is right before him. Whatever that we not like to wrap, to be rationable with him, that in his own way, in his own way, he will take off your hand. Ask for grace, ask for mercy. We are, you have wronged him, ask for mercy in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says the Lord knows that he is and as many that name his name should depart from iniquity. Ask for God, for grace, for the grace to be honest and to do that which is right before him in the mighty name of Jesus. As many, as many that love this God, they are his. How much of God's love is in your heart? Ask for God to put his love in your heart, that you will love him with all your heart. That is a magnet that will be in your heart that will join you to him, the love of Jesus Christ in your heart. If you don't have that love, Call yourself any name. You are a pastor, you are a reverend. 
if that love is not in you, you will never go with him. And that love is in you, the love of God, the love of his people is in your heart. Then you are ready for him. Ask God to prepare you for his second coming by preparing you for rapture in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you go home to study this in your own and teach others as well, that God will expand more to your heart in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, we would like to see you. We would love to reign with your son, Jesus Christ. We would like to be numbered among the saints, among the bride of Christ. We would love to be numbered among those that will be introduced to you as Father. We would love to be counted among those that, be, that whose price, by price will be paid by his blood on Calvary. We would love to be numbered among those that are alive and remain. And if by reason of death, we would love to be among, numbered among those that be resulted with you. The Lord, we pray that our life or death, whichever our state you meet us, make us ready for your coming in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, Father, Lord, that nothing in this world, no height, no valley, no suffering, nothing, and no riches, no matter how sweet, will take us away from your hand in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let your love in our heart be strong. Amen. So strong that nothing will separate us from you. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As we go, please speak to our heart Amen. and speak to our life. Amen. Others are not here. In your own way, speak to their heart Amen. and teach them these things. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. When the road shall be done and the angel will sound the trumpet and that single trumpet, every name of those that yours be mentioned, may our name not be wanting in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Brethren, you will hear your name. Amen. I will hear my own name too. And together we rejoice each other. And we say, Wow, you are here. I am here. That will be our lot in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying.